I know that your heart is to encourage your children, to give us a fresh vision. You are the light that we follow and we trust in your leading. Holy Spirit, lead us in all truth, open the eyes of our understanding to and uh, uh, have a practical insight about what you're going to share with us today. And uh, we pray that you will anoint Robin as he share, Lord, what you've put on his heart in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, praise God. Thank you for being with me today. And um, so like I was just saying earlier, the, the purpose of these meetings is to be able to deal with the deluge of things to do, different events, different mm -hmm. um different plans different programs that are all going on and if we don't uh, if we're not proactive and deliberate in understanding how to run in the new season we're going to find ourselves just shortly after after a little while we're going to we're in danger of finding ourselves burning out so what i want to do today is i want to do a brief recap on the the first of the series where i dealt with the principle of the sabbath rest and then a recap on what we did last week which was uh, running well and running with wisdom, working hard, before going into today, where we'll talk about recalibration, the, the mm. recalibration that is essential. So, Father God, thank you for wisdom and grace uh, mm -hmm. for, for each and for everyone that is listening to this, Lord, either live or over the broadcast, Father, to your glory and praise in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. So, um, but a, a, a couple of things, so I don't forget, just a couple of quick notices. One is um, every year we have a, a barbecue uh, here in Whitstable, and this year it's going to be on August the 8th. So I'll send you all the, the invites privately, um, but, but you're all so welcome. The other is, um, if you haven't seen the notice yet, we've got an IPA Family Day uh, coming up this Saturday. That's... Uh, the 11th of July. So if you're part of IFA, please be there. And if you would, if you have any friends who you think would who are leaders and who would benefit from relating with the IFA family, it can also function as an as an open day of taste today. Okay. So today, I want to start with, um, like I said, with a brief recap from where we were um, two weeks ago, and we started off in Genesis chapter two and verse two very easy passage to find so genesis chapter one we see that god was very deliberate in the way that he made the heavens and the earth and then in chapter two verse one says thus the heavens and the earth were completed in all their vast array by the seventh day god had finished the work he was doing so on the seventh day he rested from all his work and God blessed the seventh day and made it holy. He sanctified it because on it he rested from all the work of creating that he had done. And so the first principle that we looked at was this principle of a divine rest, a time where we hallow to be with the Lord on a regular weekly basis. Now, we touched on the fact that obviously Sunday won't be ideal for a lot of people that are involved in ministry because Sunday is your main work day for ministry. So if that being the case, particularly for those that are active in, in ministry and church ministry, it is imperative that we sit down with the wisdom of the Holy Spirit and we carve out a time which is just for us and for God just for us and for God. We, we, we fast from social media, we fast from WhatsApp, from answering our phone, we fast from any appointments. It is a time of refreshing being with the Lord. Now, something that I find in this time of refreshing, as I've been doing this for the last, uh, for the last uh, two and a half, three years now, um, from Sunday midnight until 6 a.m. on Wednesday, is my God-ordained Sabbath time and Sabbath rest. And something I find is it's not all about um, being with God. It's also having time for your soul to recover and your soul to rest. So I spend time, I go on a bicycle ride, I'll go to the beach, I'll do some gardening, I'll, I'll read a novel. And once, and once in a while, the Lord will remind me of something that I've been meaning to do for weeks, but I'm too busy. And he'll say, it's like, hey, now, now it's your time to finally, you know, print off, print mm -hmm. off read the print off of the email i try and do that before so i don't have to go on my email i'll print off stuff that i say oh when i'm on my rest and i've got time and there's no pressures i'll be able to go through this but we see also 
that not only did God, our Father, the one in whose image we are created, not only did he practice this, we see also the Lord Jesus practicing this. And for example, in John chapter 6, we read how uh, after Jesus had performed many miracles in verse 15, it's saying, Jesus, knowing that they intended to come and make him king by force, withdrew again to a mountain by himself. He understood the pressures of life, the pressures of ministry, and he was deliberate in withdrawing. But as the story goes on, and we know the rest of the story, he walked on the waters and he met up with the disciples. Verse 21 says this, then they were willing to take him into the boat and immediately the boat reached the shore where they were headed. So what happened? Out of Jesus' rest with the Father, there was a warping of time and of opportunity that he was not behind in the agenda of God. Isn't that exciting? Isn't that cool? Mm -hmm. Our time with God doesn't slow us down. It speeds us up because we come into a time of where time, uh, where time, opportunity, favor, uh, divine links, they all begin to twist in our favor. Uh, I find that re really, really exciting. So if we're created in the image of God and we must have a rest time. I tell people if you can't take, you know, not everybody can take two days, not everybody can even take one day, but at least take a morning take an afternoon, take an evening, take a significant six hour block. Tell your immediate circle, this over this time, I'm not available on the phone. I'm not available to take calls. I'm not available mm. for appointments. It will do you well and it will be cause refreshing to come to your soul. Okay, the next thing, just, just lift your hand if as I'm talking, you've got any comments or, or any that's questions, that, that, that'd be fine, that'd be fine. Okay, so the second thing is this, having established the rest, what the rest period does is it multiplies grace, favor, energy, strength, wisdom, direction for us to work harder, smarter than we've ever worked before. That's, that's, that's how it works. So first of all, understand that if you don't have a rest time, well, let, let me just back up here a little bit. If you are walking with the Holy Ghost, you will sense the pull of the Holy Ghost to have a time with the Father. If you're not sensing that, then you need to perhaps draw closer to God. Because it is only the work that comes out of our divine rest that is linked to our purpose and that will bear fruit much. That is the key to our purpose, what we got in the place of rest. It's easy for everybody to be busy. And that just often is, is stupidity. You know, um, later on, I'll, I'll refer to this, this, uh, this saying in Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 1, that the dead flies make the apothecary's carries uh, perfume to have an evil smell. So when your life has any anointing, when your life has any grace, you become, you become busy. And flies come, bees come, all sorts of things come. But you now need wisdom to know what is linked in with my purpose. So what am I saying? I'm saying this, if you're just a if your life is just busy, just, just doing all sorts of things, and you're not sensing the pulling of the Lord, then you need to check that there's something that is not right with your relationship with him. But how it ought to work is as he draws you into times of intimacy with him, then the ideas, the concepts, the, 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 the purposes of God for your life are birthed out of that. So out of this comes six things. From the time of rest comes six things. First, as I've been harping on about, there's a birthing of the divine plan, purpose, and strategy. That's how it works. It is incubated in the womb out of your time with the Lord. The second thing that happens is you find an increase in the favor of God in your life. We read this of Noah. It says, uh, Noah found favor before the Lord. Favor comes from your spending time with him and you're becoming his favorite child. <laughs> you know, I love to provoke people by, particularly if I'm preaching to a live audience, I'll say, God loves me more than anybody else here. I am his favorite. <laughs> I'm his favorite. Hallelujah. Does anybody want to contest for that with me? <laughs> go on, go on. You, you can all say I'm his favorite. 
I'm his favorite. That's it, that's it. So out of that time of intimacy, where his favorite, his favor is upon us, and his favor increases in our lives. Favor draws things to you that you don't deserve. Favor draws things to you that just came because somebody just took a liking to you and wanted to do something for you and wanted to bless you. Third thing that comes out of our time of divine intimacy with the Lord is energy and strength. So Paul put it this way in Colossians chapter 1 verse 28, when he's speaking about presenting every man mature with Christ, he goes on to say, I do this by all his energy which works mightily inside of me. There was a mighty energy that was in, in the Apostle Paul. And um, like, like when I was sharing this, I, I, I mentioned um, several, we can all think of, <clears throat> if we've had the opportunity of, of, of relating closely with some top-notch ministers, we can all think of how do they get so much done. Some of them, even their, their sleep, they, they even manage with five, six hours sleep. They get so much done. It's the energy of God inside of them. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Good place for a prayer there. Just hold out your hand to Jesus. And just say, Jesus. Jesus. Increase the level of energy. Increase, increase the level of energy. And creativity. And, cre and creativity. Upon me. Upon me. Amen. Hallelujah. Mm. Lord, I release that. Thank you for releasing that in Jesus' name. Jesus. Then also, fourthly, similar to energy and strength, is the ability to work hard, but it's by the increase of the grace of God. So Paul again said this in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 10. He says, I am what I am by the grace of God. He said, it wasn't me, but it was the grace of God in me that made me work harder than any of the other apostles. So again, it's, it's not a, now, don't, don't mis, 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 misunderstand me here. It, it's not a law thing. It's not a, 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 a gritting your teeth regimen thing. It is the grace of God flowing through you, enabling you to do far more than you could ever do without that, mm -hmm. that level of grace operating in your life. Mm -hmm. Again, 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 18, Paul says, but grow in grace and knowledge of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So we need to ask ourselves, am I growing in grace? Or am I perhaps uh, diminishing in grace? And one way to look at that is to look at what God is, um, what God is being able to operate and to work through us. The other thing that comes from the time of rest is the creativity of the Holy Spirit. And it's interesting that in Exodus chapter 31, verse 3, we read of Bezalel, and he's the first one, he's the first, one of the first people in the scriptures where it said the Spirit of God was upon him. And the Spirit of God was upon Bezalel for creativity, for mm. craftsmanship, for skill. The grace of God flowed through him. And Lord, I thank you because I see your grace flowing through your sons and your daughters mm -hmm. in terms of talent, in terms of artistry, in terms of uh, concepts. It could be engineering concepts, building concepts. It could be concepts when it comes to dealing with people. I thank you for your creativity that flows through the mm -hmm. souls of your servants because they spend time with you. In Jesus' mm -hmm. mighty name, Amen. So th this is, uh, you know, this is the rhythm. You spend time with the Lord, and then the Lord releases you, and you work, and you labor, and you're creative, and you're productive, and then you go back to Him. That is the rhythm that He Himself instituted right in the Book of Genesis. Now, as um, as a, as a product of understanding these principles, when we out of the time of rest, are able to work harder. Five tips to working harder here. So the first one is, is similar to taking time with resting with God. It is ordering your private world. I read a great classic book uh, by a guy called Gordon McDonald, where he spoke about the need of having an ordered private world. How do you know your private world is ordered? What does your wardrobe look like? Hmm. Is your washing done? What does your car look like? Are you catching up and abreast of different appointments? What's your, you know, what, what, how well are you looking after yourself physically? Are you looking after the food that you eat? Are you exercising well? You know, your presentation. These are all signs of a life that is ordered or a life that is not ordered. Now, if your life is not ordered, then it is very difficult for God to add more to you to do because you, you just struggle with the overload. It just becomes slapdash. So you must order your private world. And secondly, in ordering your private world, you must leave room for growth. 
this is key. There's a, there's, a, there's a massive project, I can say, you know, for myself that is just around the corner, July, it's being built, a massive project. And because of the, 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 the size of that project, the Lord has been telling me that I must take one of my working days and I must take it out of my work so that it is available so that when the project kicks in, I have the time allotted for it. <laughs> Mm. Hallelujah. I'll share, I'll share more on that in, in, in the message for, for the day. So the third thing, so first thing, uh, these are consequences of working hard, of working harder. First one is make sure your private world is ordered. Second time, leave room for growth. Third one is value your time, your time mm -hmm. and the time of others. Time is that, that is that is life. The 24 hours that God gives you, that is life. You must value it. And valuing it means that you must put things in structure. You must put things in place. Now, in valuing your, it's not just about valuing your time. It's also about valuing the time of others. You must value the time of others. It's it's key to, to having a, 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 a life that is honoring to you and a life that is honoring to others. When, when, when I encounter people that are habitual latecomers, oh, sorry, I'm late, sorry, I'm, sorry, I'm late, you, you, you know, it, it shows that there's a problem. There's a problem either of, to do with management or to do with honor. And I'm not referring to anybody here. I'm honored that you're here. I'm just making, I'm just making the, 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 the principle of it. When your life is ordered, and you have time allotted for different things, you value your time. It, it causes there to be an increase of grace and of favor on your life. There's a saying that punctuality is the etiquette of kings. Let's take that on board for ourselves and make a vow. You know, there's, there's one man, he's with the Lord now. This, this, this brother, fantastic brother, you know, this brother tells me the testimony. He was never knowingly late for any meeting in his entire life. He passed on to be the Lord in the 70s. There was one time his wife told me that they were to go for a meeting in London and he woke up extra early and said, darling, they were meant to leave about 8 a.m. He said, darling, we need to leave at 6. He said, why do you need to leave at 6? He said, you know, don't worry. I just know we need to leave at 6. And it turned out that there were some repairs and some stuff on the road. If they hadn't left at 6, they would be, they would be late. But what a testimony, you know, how many of us would love that testimony that we were never knowingly late to any meeting, any appointment. It's possible. It's possible. It's honoring God. It's honoring the grace of God on our lives. Okay, two more things before I go on to the, the, the topic for today. The fourth thing in terms of working harder, working smarter, is make sure you are investing in mentees around you, your children to start with. I, how well are you mentoring them? Beyond your children, make sure that you are pouring out into others. What does this do? This, 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 this multiplies the efficacy of your fulfilling your assignment and your purpose. When it's not just you, but you are pouring out into others. And then fifthly, trust God for helpers to be raised for your assignment. You know, um, just by my by my desk here i have this passage 1 chronicles chapter uh, 12 verse 20, 20 chapter 12 verse 22 day by day men came to help and put your name in day by day men came to help robin until he had a great army like the army of god put your name in as i say it again day by day men came to help put your name day by day men came to help tahiri Hallelujah. Okay, Tyree is getting that. The others are, you know. So make that your call that day by day men come to help me. Now, you can only say that statement with boldness when your purpose is clear and you know I need divine helpers. I have a purpose. I have a purpose. And I know that for each of you that are on with this, this with me live, you know, to hear and join them, you have purpose. So if you have purpose, you, you need to be trusting God for men to come along and help you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So. I'm going to go on to the, the section for today. We've just done a recap on getting your Sabbath and working smarter. But I'm going to go on today. And the, 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 the topic for today is recalibration. Say with me, recalibration. Recalibration. <laughs> recalibration. <clears throat> Glory to God. So, our um, ju just just before I go on, any any quick comments on the summary of what we did last week and the week before before I go on? 
I can uh, testify about uh, the benefit of resting. Many times I, uh, uh, I felt, you know, Sunday, I'm thinking I really need to, to plan my lessons. And um, like you said, the Holy Spirit pulling me to pray. And I said, no, before I do anything, I need to pray. And then actually it carries on and carries on. And then in the morning I say, oh Lord, help me. Because it seems as if for me, I'm thinking, no, no, I should have planned. But then early in the morning, download is start to give me creative ideas for this is lesson what I, I could have spent hours to to think about in five minutes he gives it to me and wow. so really i realized their time even if they go to bed just don't worry about it so. <laughs> <laughs> wow that's 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 beautiful that's how it needs to work love love that mm -hmm. love that yeah. love <laughs> okay all right so we'll go on to the topic today which is recalibration and um, a uh, key verse for this is Jeremiah chapter 12, verse 5. Jeremiah 12, 5 has this to say, If you've run with footmen and they have wearied you, then how can you contend with horses? And if in the land of peace, wherein you trusted, they have wearied you, how will you do in the swelling of the Jordan? So here, you know, I, I just love this passage. I've known it for many years. So he's saying there is coming a greater season and a deeper season of interaction with the Holy Ghost and with people. And so he's saying, if you can't manage where you are now, how will you manage in the time to come? You know, people are saying... Uh, revival is about breaking out upon us. The glory of God is coming. Life will never be the same again. And I agree with all those statements. But my concern is, how we ha have we learned the principles and have we put the structures in place to be able to cope with that? In the time in the upper room in Acts chapter 1, things were put in place in the 12 apostles and the 120 in the upper room such that God could trust them with a harvest of 3,000. And then just a few months down the line, they were trusted again with another 5,000. And I've often wondered on the question that in the days to come, if the Lord were to give to any of us a thousand souls, brand new born again souls, and he was to ask us, what would you do with them? Do we know the answer? You've got a thousand souls. You've got three months to disciple them. What will you teach them? How will you cope with a thousand people? The thousand people maybe all have your phone number. What do you do? How do you... <laughs> We're talking of the glory of God coming and we're talking of harvest and revival. What will you do? <laughs> when a hundred families in the neighborhood see the glory of God physically and tangibly on your roof, tangible manifestation of the glory of God, when you go in, when, when every other time when you go into Sainsbury's to shop, suddenly the glory of God is revealed on you and people begin to look at you. How do we cope? What needs, so that's why today I'm talking to us about recalibration. If we can't even understand how to structure our lives because of the many Zoom calls, then what about the, the reality apart from Zoom calls? And so, you know, say to your neighbor, say to whoever's listening with you, recalibrate. Recalibrate. <laughs> it's, 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 it's very key. It's very key. Then again, two other uh, key passages I want to look at. One is Ecclesiastes chapter 10 and verse 1, where he says, um, dead flies, they corrupt the perfume, they corrupt the, 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 the anointing of the Lord in your life. Now, I, I want to uh, just uh, extract uh, two, three things from, from this passage. One is that each of us has an anointing from the Holy Spirit. And we need to be asking the Lord in this new season that we are in, what have I been involved in or what have I been doing in the old season, which if I allow it to remain, will be like a dead fly. Mm. It will affect the aroma of the Holy Ghost coming from me. Mm. The second thing that I want us to understand about um, carrying the anointing of God is the anointing of God is an aroma, it's a smell, and it draws both flies 
And in terms of pollination, both bees, we want bees. We want insects that will, that will pollinate, that will cause there to be pollination and an increase. And it is up for us to prune the things that we attend to in this season. Because some of them uh, don't mean to be derogatory, but some of them will be like flies. A fly is something that just comes, is opportunistic, it sees you, and it wants to draw on your time. But yeah. it's not in line with your purpose. It's not in line with your purpose. You need to recognize it and deal with it. And then the, the third passage I want us to refer to is Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 11, which says, The race is not to the swift, nor the battle to the strong. It requires the wisdom and the grace of God. So, Father God, as we go for this next 10 minutes into this message of recalibration, we ask for your wisdom, your insight, your favor upon us in Jesus' Amen. precious name. Amen. All right. So, um, in understanding recalibration, I want to refer to the word that the Lord gave me for July. And the word for July, he said that as we come into July, that he is adjusting the spirit level and the plumb line on our lives. The spirit level is used to gauge, it's used to build, it's used to check whether there's a sense of balance. So expect, as you go more and more into the month of July, expect that sense of balance to be adjusted that sense of priorities to be adjusted. There's a recalibration taking place. Thank you, Father, for the things that you are doing in the hearts and the spirits of mm -hmm. your sons and daughters that are calling for a recalibration and an adjustment of the plumb line and the spirit mm -hmm. level of their lives to your glory and praise. So, mm -hmm. in understanding that we're in a season, we're entering into a new season, and that the Holy Ghost is adjusting our plumb line and our spirit level, there are eight things, well, no, nine, nine, nine quick things, quick points that I want to touch on. One is expect there to be new priorities. It's a new season. So it means reprioritize. And you may have your list of purposes, your list of your vision statement, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You need to adjust them. It's key. It's key to growing in the favor of God. Second thing that we need to adjust is the methods we need to adjust. The methods that we have been using and we've been used to, and this is in everything, um, right down from things like a graphic display, the way that we send our email, the way we respond to um, WhatsApp, the way we prepare our, 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 our lecture notes, our messages, the way we prepare for ministry, uh, when it comes to, to the marketplace, the way we prepare for board meetings, all these are under scrutiny and we must be receiving the new methods. Third thing is we should expect new friends. It's a new season. It's their new friends. It's not that the old friends go away. They become the old friends just become old friends. <laughs> they become old friends and you get new friends. It's a new season. Friends make a man. Friends, a friend maketh a man. So expect to have new friends. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just hold out your hand to Jesus. Just say, Jesus. Jesus. I receive from you. I receive from you. The new friends. New friends. The new relationships you have. New relationships you have. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> new friends are coming. Fourth mm -hmm. thing to expect in recalibration is new structures. The structure has to do with the apostolic the pillars, the pillars of your spiritual life, the pillars of your family life, the pillars of your vocational life, the structures and the pillars, the things that you need to make sure that you have in place. The structures will, will be changing as we recalibrate. Fifthly, in terms of recalibration, expect, and I, I heard this again yesterday, it was mentioned in our June 6th conference, expect an update to your prayer list. Your prayer list, the priestly prayers that you pray every day. Expect an update as heaven releases new assignments to you. You know, yesterday I was so blessed. I went to get a, a new tire for my car uh, just here in Whitstable. And I, I saw this uh, gentleman and uh, we just got chatting because I recognized he was part of one of the local churches. And uh, he didn't recognize me at first. Then we were saying bye-bye. And I said, what's his name? Michael, he, I mentioned my name. And he said, oh, he said, you're Reverend Robin. He said, I pray for you every Thursday. I pray for all the leaders.
name of Jesus, the church in Whitstable. It was so touching to know that God has given somebody an assignment to pray for me. <laughs> Hallelujah. Mm. Hallelujah. So who is God wanting to give you an assignment to pray for that you're not yet praying for? Ha, huh. Holy Spirit, release those mm -hmm. names. Release those nations, those projects in Jesus' name. You know, it doesn't take much. It doesn't take any time to pray for more people. It just takes um, hardly, and the time is insignificant, but it's the heart, the expanse of your heart. So as you recalibrate, it's a new heart, an ex expanse of heart God is giving you. Then, number six, expect a download of new protocols with God and with men. Protocols and etiquette, they have to do with royalty. They have to do with becoming less of a servant and more of a king. You are called to royalty. There are downloads of new protocols right now from heaven in the way that you relate to your father, in the way you relate to the Lord Jesus Christ and to the Holy Spirit. There are new protocols. Protocols show that you have been well-schooled. Joseph needed to be well-schooled before he could continue with his assignment with Pharaoh and the assignment of governing all the millions of Hebrews that were with him. He needed to be well-schooled. Daniel needed to be well-schooled. And he served many kings, but he was well-schooled. He understood protocols. There is an elevation for many that are listening today. There is an elevation of your divine assignment. And that elevation of divine assignment means that the way you behaved with God and the protocols that you didn't understand and were ignorant of, the time of ignorance God has winked at, but now he speaks for repentance. And I've shared on these extensively in many talks that I've been giving, you know, just for an illustration, people who are mature in the Lord and they write the name of God with small g. It shows, it shows ignorance in a, in a great degree. But I use that as an illustration because that, that is obvious for us. But there must be an upgrade in our protocols with God. Sit down and ask the Holy Spirit. Say, Holy Spirit, will you school me for the upgrade of divine assignment that I have with God? And there are also new protocols with men. Develop yourself. Develop the etiquettes. Develop the, 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 the plans and the purposes that you have with God Almighty and with, as well as with men. You know somebody, you know, I, I, I have a friend, um, again, you know, here in Whitstable, and um, this guy, he, 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 he grew up, you know, he, he's from a family of, of millionaires and he's a millionaire himself. And I love being in his presence. I love chatting with him and I love meeting up with him because uh, when you meet up with him, the, the pleasantness and the etiquette of somebody who has been born into wealth and who is in wealth himself, there's a humility. There's a, 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 an integrity with which he walks, with which he talks, with which he operates. He's not yet saved. I'm praying for, I've prayed for his salvation, but I love being with him. Hallelujah. Do people love being with you? Are there upgrades to your own uh, ways of walking with God that are required and that are necessary? Ha! Huh. Receive an upgrade in Jesus' name. Number seven. Number seven is, uh, again, new etiquette and new pathways to honor. There are, honor is something that is being so emphasized in this season. Honor to God, honor to men, honor to leaders, honor to our children. There's a new emphasis on honor. Receive a mantle for how to walk in greater honor in Jesus' name. Amen. Mm -hmm. Then number eight is a new season. We're recalibrating. There's also a call for new doctrine. Your doctrine needs to change. In Acts of Apostles, it says they gave themselves to the apostles' teaching, to the breaking of bread and prayers, and the many signs and wonders were done by them, and fear came upon many. The apostles' doctrine. There must be a change in the emphasis in your doctrine in this new time, in this new season. Just, uh, just a, couple of, a couple of pointers. One I've alluded to already, the fear of God. 
It's not just the love of God, which is pastoral, but it's also the fear of God, which is apostolic and prophetic. We must grow in the fear of God. There was a, there was a personal prophecy for me yesterday, where again, the Lord was even speaking to me. And he was saying, Robin, you know, you love me and I know you love me, but you must grow in the fear of me also. Hallelujah. The roles that apostles and prophets play in our lives, the significance of that is something the Holy Spirit is emphasizing we must change. The regularity with which we break bread together must also change. It's something the Holy Ghost has been, has been emphasizing. And last two things in terms of calibr calibration. Last two things is there must be a recalibration and a restructuring of both your vision, your, your vision statement. What is your vision? Somebody meets you, uh, an important personality meets you, a person, you know, Benny Hinn meets you and uh, you're chatting over coffee and you just have two minutes with him. And he says to you, he says, hey, what's your vision? <laughs> He's busy. What's your vision? What are you going to say? Are you going to start fumbling and saying, well, I'm not really sure. I love people and I love evangelism. No, no. What's your vision? You want to be able to say, this is my vision. Hallelujah. It shows that somebody is collected. It shows that somebody is well connected and somebody is ready to move forward. If you can articulate your vision. Then again, what is your purpose? Somebody says, hey, you know, what is your purpose? What is your purpose? If you don't know your purpose and you're not able to articulate your purpose, there's a great risk of being sidetracked and things carrying you from one side to the other. Glory to God. Mm -hmm. Next week, we'll be talking about the, another aspect of recalibration, which is to do with our, our personal uh, spiritual disciplines with the Lord. But I'm going to leave us with that. I, um, I'm going to leave us with that so I'm not in danger of... Uh, of, of pouring out too much at one go but also i think that our time is of 30 minutes is about expired glory to god mm -hmm. so um any question any quick question from anyone oh. uh, uh, is, is there room for one last question please uh i told you because of my uh um of my need of my uh, i'm seeking god for the next step professionally and he's been telling me, uh, and this is where it's interesting, the conversation, ask and you should receive, you know, really an encouragement. You know, he can give me a greater thing that I'm asked and even ask. Uh, um,